<laughs> Not too many churches you applaud the hymn. So thank you for applauding yourselves and you may be seated. And I wanted to let you know how important prayer and my belief in prayer and miracles is and answered prayers. My guest today is one of those walking miracles. Take a look at the jumbotron. Before all of this happened, I thought, my life is good. I married Frank 19 years ago. I have three sons and four grandchildren, and I had no indication that anything was wrong with me. Then uh, one evening I was getting ready for bed, and I passed out. I was taken by ambulance to the local hospital, and they discovered I had a very large brain tumor and I was transported to UCLA, given the advice that the surgery needed to happen rather quickly in order to save my life. When I first saw Evelyn, she was awake, but she really wasn't aware. The tumor was occupying about 30 or 40 percent of the left half of the brain. Uh, literally, it was as big as the average person's fist. Without surgery, she would have lapsed into a coma, and this would have been fatal. It was kind of desperate feeling. And one day I was in bed praying. All of a sudden, I felt I was in the hands of God. I've never felt it in that same way. And I had not a care in the world. The surgery lasted for 15 hours. My family was there waiting all night long. And Dr. Martin came walking into the room where they were saying, I got it all. And I moved from there right into recovery. I've always had faith for many, many years, but I think my faith is stronger now. I feel a closeness and a reassurance that he will really be there beside me through anything I go through, and I feel I can depend on that 100%. Would you please welcome longtime friend Evelyn Freed. Evelyn, God loves you, and so do we. Thank you. I saw a picture of you in a wheelchair shortly after the surgery. You don't look like that at all anymore. <laughs> what was the recovery process like for you? Well, um, I didn't have a lot of education ahead of time since it was an emergency. And uh, I, I, when they brought me a walker, I thought, hmm, I don't think this is my look. But <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't your fashion statement. Right, no, huh? no. <laughs> but I had to use a walker, and eventually I graduated to a cane, and I had physical therapists uh, coming to the home uh, working with me. I also went to a physical therapy clinic because my jaw was sort of locked. I had to have a lot of therapy on that. And um, the wonderful thing about it is all of those people caring for me were exceptional. And it, it was a, a broadening experience in that regard. Um, I, I had to learn to walk. The first time they asked me to walk by myself, I'm kind of going like this. And eventually I could walk. And they showed me the stairwell. And the therapist says, you will go down and up those, those big stairs that you know about. Show me a fist. <sighs> that was in there. Mm -hmm. Absolutely astonishing that you're standing here today. Do you have any, any side effects at this mm -hmm. time? I have a little imbalance if I walk somewhere that's a little tilted or deeper steps or something like that. And if, if a man pulls me to him and hugs me and starts to walk off, I'm apt to fall flat. <laughs> <laughs> I won't walk off. <laughs> and I have a little trembling, which is just uh, involuntary. It doesn't really... I'm a little clumsy, but it, it might go away. They don't really know. It's probably an after effect. And um, that's uh, pretty much it. I'm, I'm doing, I think Dr. What? Martin told me I'm 99% cured. 99% is pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> what has this done to your faith? Well, I've always had faith, but I have never felt so con totally controlled and in God's hands as I did this time. Hmm. I was just, um, I never had any fear. I really didn't have pain. He was so in charge of me and I feel that God is with me still. 
I think he has things for me to do. I am brighter, I am more active in my thinking and in my living and enthusiastic. I'm active in uh, guideposts and in uh, Fuller Theological Seminary in here. And these are all like organizations yes, in that they they're healthy form of Christianity. And they're all about helping other people every day. And that's my goal in life, is to help people every day. And I'm helping Dr. Martin in some ways too with his research. Isn't that tremendous? Thank you, Evelyn. Uh -huh. You're welcome. Well, you, your doctor is here, Dr. Neil Martin. Mm -hmm. Would you please stand up? In fact, would you come on up here? I want to talk with you. It's a pleasure to meet you. God nice used you to perform a miracle, didn't he? Well, in many ways, seeing Evelyn here today is a miracle, seeing her doing so well, because I, we, we face every operation with confidence and a, and a degree of hope, but I was concerned about her surgery because of the large size of the tumor. And during that 15 hours of surgery, there are a lot of opportunities for things to go wrong, and none of them did. Hmm. And every critical milestone during that operation, when there were various things that we may have found or we may have been able to do, the right thing happened every step of the way. Well, you know, we were praying for her, and, and I know you were praying and God answers prayers, and, uh, and she's doing very well because of that. Now, you have a, a, a new instrument that you're, you've been working with now, is that correct? All of us would like to be in two places at once. Yes. Uh, and I often have to do that in order to take care of a medical crisis when I'm not on the scene physically. So we can now appear on the scene virtually. We, use, we have a robot that we can drive remotely from a, a different location and interview a patient through the robot, they can see your face on the robot's head, you can see the patient, and I can actually examine patients remotely when, when there's some kind of a crisis. It really allows us to uh, spread the skills and knowledge and experience of specialists to remote locations when, uh, when they're not there physically. Tell me about your faith. You're a member of uh, Bel Air Presbyterian, is that correct? That's right, that's right. I'm a Presbyterian, and uh, I, I would have to say I don't get to church as often I, as I would like. But uh, I, will, I will say this, that very often before surgery, or yes. very often in the recovery room, a person tells me, everybody in my congregation is praying for me. And when I hear that, I feel very good. Because I, I don't know, I don't have statistics. But when I hear that, things go well. Things go well much often then the, the, the problems that can occur don't happen. <laughs> so so Evelyn, Evelyn clearly had a lot of people praying for her because everything went perfectly. Well, on behalf of this congregation, the members here, uh, I just want to thank you for the work you did through God's guidance and prayers in uh, giving us Evelyn back. And we're just so pleased to have her here. And we thank you for being responsive to God's call and for touching people in a positive and constructive way. Thank you. It's, just, it's wonderful to have a job that's about helping people, as you know. Yes. And I, and I feel the same way. I feel privileged. I have to say, how many of you would like to trade places with me? <laughs> <laughs> Evelyn, God loves you, so do I. Neil, God loves you, so do we. God bless you both. Thank you so much.